it's Damon L. Jacobs for We Love Soaps TV, and I'm here with the beautiful and incredibly talented Florencia Lozano. How are you? I am very well. Okay. <laughs> Especially after that introduction. Oh, well, it is so great to speak with you. Um, we are sitting here on the stage of the show, underneath my bed, currently playing here at 224 Waverly Place in New York City. Easily accessible by most subways, trains, and automobiles. <laughs> Um, for people that are not, or people that are coming in from out of town to see this. Um, I can't wait to speak to you about the play. In your description, you are the playwright. You are the playwright. The play. What inspired you to write this piece? Oh, um, my childhood, basically. Um, and, you know, that, that answer would change day to day, moment to moment, depending on when you ask me. But, Last night, I, I was thinking a lot when, uh, when I was talking to some friends of mine about it, about how much <clears throat> the panic disorder that I uh, developed when I was about 13, how much that, that time in my life, um, experiencing panic attacks for the first time and then over the course of several years, really uh, affected me. And this play is a sort of, it's telling my attempt to express what that experience was for me internally. And that's been a really cathartic experience to be able to, to, to theatricalize what was going on internally um, and to share it. And um, uh, yeah, so that, that, was, that was a big inspiration for this play. The play is very, very powerful. It deals with so many different themes. It has, um, it, it kind of shows the consequences of political turmoil on a family structure. Mm -hmm. um, there's actually, a, I'm fascinated by um, research done that refers to intergenerational transmission of trauma mm -hmm. that was often, um, that came about in the 1960s um, based on a lot of symptoms that survivors of the Holocaust, a lot of their children were coming to therapy and suffering with symptoms of trauma, of panic, of hypervigilance, um, not being able to sleep, ulcers, high blood pressure. Mm -hmm. People who had never themselves wow. experienced a trauma, but people who had had parents who had gone through severe political trauma were exhibiting these symptoms. And a lot of research came about after that about what happens to family members and children of parents who have been through political turmoil. That is certainly an issue that's examined in this Absolutely. play. Absolutely. Um, was this, I mean, what we see in the play is, is how the children are reacting to some of the trauma the parents have gone through in Argentina. Um, tell us more about what that was. Well, you know, when I, sort of, when I say panic disorder, it was, it was an umbrella sort of uh, uh, issue that there were a lot of different um, catalysts that, that uh, acted together to, 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 uh, to cause the panic disorder. And one of them was definitely um, hearing my father, my parents are from Argentina, and hearing my father at a very young age, when I was you know six, seven, eight years old, and on through high school, talk about, because uh, in 1976, when there was a military uh, coup in Argentina and the beginning of the Dirty War, which lasted for seven years, six or seven years. Uh, I was, in 1976, six years old. So from then on, um, hearing about people disappearing. You know, my mother's whole family lived there. Um, my relatives all lived there. So it was very real for me that my relatives, my flesh and blood, were living in a country where people were, according to my father, you know, taken from their homes in the middle of the day, uh, in the middle of the night, uh, and taken to detention centers, taken to police stations, and tortured and killed. Um, it was hard for me to really wrap my mind around how that was even possible. You know, I had a real visceral sense that right now I'm living on a planet where <laughs> this is going on. I may be at a distance from it in terms of geographically, but emotionally, my parents, this was their home. Uh, my, my mother's sister and her brother lived there. They were raising families. 
Um, so I couldn't help but thinking, you know, what if, what if I still lived there? You know, what would that have been like? Um, and even though that you were in a, a, you were growing up at the time in a relatively safe suburb in New England, yes, um, outside Boston, it it can feel very unsafe to a child who's who's hearing and learning about. I mean, it, it's yes. it's hard just to hear about these things happening now as an adult, but children aren't always equipped or able to yeah. hear about such atrocities. And um, yes. I, I think we've seen this in the situation in your family with Holocaust survivors, with people who have done that. Quite often they can't, they don't talk about it in their communities. And I, I don't know if your family had, the, if your parents had the ability or would have talked to anybody mm -hmm. in Boston about their experience or about any support. But a lot of times people just kind of want to say we're safe now we don't want to talk about it we're not going to talk about it to outsiders but we will talk about it to our children yes. and still educate them about it mm -hmm. what we see in this play so so i think wonderfully illustrated is how emotionally that can have consequences for a child to be exposed to this even vicariously through the stories mm -hmm. um, now for you you said this was cathartic to to develop this what I mean at this point in your life what led you to, to go inside and pull out some of these memories which are mm, very difficult I mean mm -hmm. very emotionally <laughs> difficult yes they, they are um, at the same time I feel like there's I'm glad that there is in a way this document of my childhood because um, despite all of it despite the terror and fear and anxiety and Feeling oftentimes, you know, if I had to describe what it felt like to have a panic disorder, um, I felt like I was imprisoned in my own head. I, you know, that feeling is very, very. I can I can remember that very strongly, and is probably the hardest thing I ever went through um, in in my life so far. Um, there was a lot of joy. There was a there was there was a you know my sisters who are so important to me, um, remembering what our relationship was back then, remembering what our parents did for us by coming to this country and sacrificing all that they did, um, the beauty of a family that is, despite everything, um, striving towards something. Um, I think there's a lot of, um, I, I, feel, I feel grateful to my family for who they were and what they give, gave me, even even my dad. I mean, it, and I say even my dad because he was really the one who was um, obsessed with, with, with what was happening in Argentina. And yes, it was very difficult for me and my sisters and probably my mother too, but especially as a child to really uh, process that. But I don't regret, at the same time, I don't regret that he did that because it has given me and my sisters a sense of, um, a sense of, well, first of all, a sense that that even happened in the first place. I mean, so many people don't know that there was a dirty war in Argentina, that, there, that the U.S. has been involved in Latin America and, and around the world in so many nefarious ways. It's, it's, it's startling to me how, how ignorant uh, people are about their own country. So um, I am grateful that I have that perspective on the world. Um, uh, you know, I, I'm grateful to my father for being so righteous in some ways about there is right and there is wrong. You know, um, uh, I think that that gave me something and my sisters too that we carry within us that that is a, a value system that I, um, I think is a rich one. I mean, it's, it's part of who you are. It's your composition as a human, as an artist, as an actress. This is, yeah. this experience is what's made you who you are. And, you know, we certainly know how your performance is as Taya. And for those of us that have been fortunate <laughs> to see you in New York Theater, we know how that you, you know, do convey such powerful emotions in your performances. And, you know, it's, I, perhaps because of some of these experiences that you've been through, that you are able to reach a certain place within yourself and communicate that with your the yeah. viewers. Now, have your sisters seen the play? They have. And <laughs> what did they, uh, <laughs> what was there? Um, it, 